Hey everyone and welcome to a VK Northern video. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use the Zebo updater to update the Zebo 737 mod for X-Plane 11. Apologies for any noise in the background, there are fireworks going on and I'm not going to be able to edit those out probably in the background footage because I'm really not that good with audio. Anyways, I'm going to be showing you how you can update the Zebo mod using the Zebo updater. So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and download the Zebo updater by going to this link zeboupdater.net. I'll leave this in the description. And what you're going to do is going to click on download for Windows. Uh, there is no option available for Mac or Linux sadly. And what you can do for those instead is get the Zebo notifier for the uh, browsers of Edge and Google Chrome. So first thing you're going to do is download it of course, as I said before. and Go ahead and put it somewhere that you can remember it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my downloads here and download that. Next up, we're going to go ahead and back to the home page for the Zebo updater. I'm going to go ahead and click download Zebo mod. Then what we're going to do is download the full release 3.50. This step is only necessary if you do not have the Zebo mod already installed. If this is your first time installing it, download the full release. If not, you don't have to do this step and you can skip to the next chapter. You can go ahead and click on full release, click save as and put it wherever. You're going to go ahead and let that download and I'll cut to when we have it fully downloaded. All right. Once you have gotten, gone ahead and downloaded those two, we're going to go ahead and find those two that we have just downloaded and go to the file location. So here we are, we have both of these available right here. What we're going to first do is install the Zebo mod, the full version. So what you're going to do is right click, open it. I'm using 7-zip for this. You can also use the Windows default extractor or you can use any zip extractor of your own. What you're then going to do is go to your x 11 root installation. This is located for me in Steam Apps Common x 11. This might be different for you depending on if you have the Steam version or if you have the standalone version from xplane.com. What you're going to then do is go to aircraft. Once you're in the aircraft folder, you're going to go ahead and extract this. So I'm just going to go ahead and select it here. And so what I'm going to do is just drag and drop. And once this is done, I'll be back. With that now completed, you're going to go ahead and open it just to make sure that all the files are contained in here. And once you have verified that all the files are here, you're going to go ahead and go back to your downloads folder or wherever you have the Zebo updater.exe. Once you have found where the Zebo.ex or Zebo updater.exe is, you're going to right click, you're going to cut it, and you're going to go ahead and put it in a place that is usually safe for it, and where most of your applications go. You can put this wherever, but I, what I like to do is I go to my program files x86, create a new folder, and just call it Zebo updater. Then you're going to double click, you're going to go ahead and paste it in. Once it's pasted in here, it's going to look like this. I'm going to also create a new folder in here called Zebo installs. You can name this folder, whatever you want, but this is where all of your Zebo installation files are going to be going for the Zebo updater. So once you're done that, double click on it and run it. Now it's not going to pop up like this, so I'm going to quickly go into my utilities and click reset and reset the application to its original state. You're going to open it up and see something like this. It's going to say welcome to the Zebo updater and then it's going to help you configure it. So we're going to click let's get started. Now what you're going to do is click on the browse button here and you're going to go back to that folder that you just created. So that's going to be in my E program files x86. Zebo updater and Zebo installs. What this basically is, is where all the update files are going to be located. Next up, we're going to go ahead and do the mod selection. This is just a selection of the X Plane 11 Zebo 737 mod. This one is going to be located in your root X Plane 11 directory. You're going to go to X Plane 11, aircraft, and you're going to select the folder B737-800X and then click select folder. Once that's selected, you'll be all done and you can click finish. Now what the Zebo updater does is that it'll update the Zebo mod and back up your whatever you select here. So liveries, for example, or your smart, smart copilot configuration, 
your prefs and configs, like your camera presets and sound and whatnot, anything relating to the aircraft, your X camera files, if you use X camera, any custom Lua scripts that you might be using with X Lua, and FMOD, which can also be backed up as well. Now, once you have done that, you already have a main install of the Zebo mod. So we don't need that file anymore. What you can now do instead is update it by clicking on this cloud icon here. This icon is only visible when you have an update available for the Zebo mod. This will not be present if you have a fully up-to-date version of the Zebo mod. So if you click on it, it'll tell you what patch it's going to install or if it's going to be a full version. And then you're going to go ahead and click download and install. But before you do that, select what you want to back up and restore before it installs it because this will perform a clean install before installing the new version. I believe this is for full release versions. I'm not sure if this happens with the patches, but it's good to have whatever you want backed up, backed up. So if you don't use Smart Copilot, don't back it up. If you don't care about your camera positions and you like resetting them every single time you get a new update, go ahead and keep that off. Otherwise, keep it on. Liveries, if you don't care, whatever, just turn it off. This is all configurable, configurable by you. Go ahead and click on the cloud and go ahead and click download and install. You can also remind me next time for when the next time you open the Zebo updater, or you can just skip the version if there might be some issues with it. Click download and install. It'll download the patch down here and tell you the status of it. Once it's done that, it'll give you the release notes and the top one is going to be the latest one, followed by some previous release notes. It'll also include full versions as well. Once it's done, click close, and then you can close out, close out of this, and you should be good. There is one more thing I would like to do, which is show you how to make this more simple. You can go ahead and right click this and do create shortcut, and then rename this to just Zebo Updater. You can either place this on your desktop now, or if you like to search for stuff here and just find it here, if you try to do that, you're not going to find it. So what you can do instead is if you find any old application that has a shortcut. So for example, I like to use Notepad. Just right click that, open file location, you'll find all of these things here. You're gonna go back to the subfolder of programs. And over here are all the different programs that you have on your computer. What you're gonna go ahead and do is right click this, shortcut, cut it, and then paste it into here. You're going to go ahead and give administrator permission. If you don't have administrator permission, you might not be able to do this. Once you go ahead and put it in here, you can close out of everything, press your start button, and then go ahead and search for Zebo Updater, and lo and behold, it'll be present in here by just searching for it. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, please leave a like and comment down below if you have any questions. You can go ahead and try to get any answers from me if I'm able to answer them. Otherwise, you can contact Slavboss by going to support and then going to the forums, or you can use email if you want to contact him by email or use the knowledge base. I recommend you use the knowledge base before you go ahead and contact for support because your ans the answer to your question might have already been solved in here. Otherwise, you can go to the forum post and get it solved there, or you can send an email. That will be the end of this video. Thank you very much for sticking around. And of course, I hope to see you all in the next one. Take care and have yourselves a good one.